friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Katerina or Kat. If you're new here and this is my channel of everything cozy, bookish, and lifestyle related. And today we're going to be talking about the worst books that I read in 2023 and my most favorite books that I read in 2023. I feel like for me 2023 was a really weird reading year. I read around 81 books and a lot of the books that I read just didn't really bring me any feelings. Like I did have quite a few books that I really liked but there were a lot of books that I just didn't care about or I didn't feel anything for or I just really didn't like. Well, And so I'm definitely hoping for more reads in 2024 and so we will be talking about all of those today but before we do that definitely make sure to hit that like button and also make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. With that let's talk about the worst books that I read in 2023. Now we are going to go from least favorite to worse. So there are definitely some books that I read that while I didn't enjoy them, they weren't the worst things in the world. And then there were some books that I absolutely loathed last year and I wish that I did not take the time to attempt to read them. So starting off the very first one, and this one's going to come to a surprise for a lot of you, especially since I did a reading vlog for it, and it is Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. This is in my least favorites category. So after I read Iron Flame. I did give it a four and a half star, I believe, when I first read it. And then I sat and I thought about it. And then there was a lot of things that I didn't like. And then I thought about it more. And there was a lot more things I didn't like. And then I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And it finally came to a point where I was just like, these things are really annoying me. And I just can't classify it as a favorite book. Some of the things were the character development. While there was a lot that I enjoyed and that we did get more character development with Violet, our main character, there were choices and things that she was thinking that just made absolutely no sense. There was also the fact that while we did get some world development, there was just still not enough. The character of Violet was going from one point to another and it just still wasn't enough in the end at the end of the day to really make me happy. Then my next least favorite is one that I it was my biggest disappointment of 2023 and that was Gwen and Art Are Not In Love by Lex Croucher. I was so disappointed with this. This is an Arthurian retelling except Gwen and Art are not in love. They're actually like enemies and it, does, it isn't an enemies to lovers. It's a uh, enemies work together to get their lovers and most of the book was them fighting with each other. It wasn't about them like pursuing their love interest. It was about how much they hated each other and how much they loathed each other and that they were all liars and then there's this tiny little plot in the background happening and it was just not worth it. I really thought like I was gonna DNF it and I wish I did not pick it up. And then if you've been following me at least since I've started in July, you would know that I was reading The Demon Prince of Momoki House by Aya Shoto and that every single wrap-up video I've talked about these volumes and I've read all the volumes now and every single wrap-up video I've talked about how much I've disliked this series and that I was hoping it would get better but it didn't. And this is a series that I had invested time and money into. There's 16 volumes and every volume is like $10. And most of the volumes had nothing to do with the main plot line. So what was the point of having 16 volumes? And the next one is A Natural History of Dragons, A Memoir by Lady Trent by Mary Brennan. And this is a series that I thought I was going to really enjoy and I was going to continue. I will not be continuing this series. I found A Natural History of Dragons to be absolutely, utterly boring. I thought I was going to go into a book that was going to be full to the brim of dragons and dragon lore and dragon history and you know where these dragons came from and we get none of that. This was definitely a very big disappointment for 2023. And then moving into my DNFs as well as my worst book read for 2023 and the first one is one that I've DNFed and that is The Darkness Before Them by Matthew Ward. I made it halfway through there was an entire vlog where I was trying to oh I was replacing my screen time for my reading time and I started this book and it was boring and then there was nothing happening and it was just tedious and the fact that his writing he would literally take 20 pages to write about what a doorknob looks like and I was just getting so bored and so underwhelmed with this book that I finally did decide to DNF it halfway through am I gonna pick it up again maybe maybe I'll finish it and then the two books that are vying for the like top books of not being the greatest for 2023 one has been DNF'd and one was one that I did complete and I don't have them because they were library books and the first one is The Wicked Bargain by I think Gabe Cole I was so bored with that book The Wicked Bargain was pretty much following a queer pirate and I just didn't care 
I cared nothing about the book because nothing happened because all this character did was sit on a boat and debate whether or not they wanted to save their father and I was like this is stupid. And then finally vying for that number one spot of worst books for 2023 is The Silent Patient by Alex Michelides. I don't remember his name and this was another book that I read for a vlog and I absolutely despised it. I did not like how the author portrayed women in The Silent Patient. I liked the idea. I liked the thought of this woman killing her husband and then going silent and never speaking again. However, how women are portrayed in not only just a regular setting but also in a medical ward and how the medical ward was portrayed as well as the fact that I feel like there was no effort on the author's part to research medical wards and psychiatric inpatient treatments definitely was my least favorite book of 2023. So those were my least favorite books of 2023. Now just because they were my least favorite or my worst books of 2023 doesn't mean that you're going to dislike them. So I always encourage others to read books that I don't like because you might actually find a favorite in those books that I didn't like. So moving into my favorite books of 2023, I had quite a few favorites of 2023. I found a favorite series. I found a number one book that ended up moving up to my top number one spot in my top 10 book list. So just with my least favorites to worst, we're going to do the same. I'm going to talk about my favorite books and then we're going to go into my most favorite top number one book for 2023. And starting off as a series that I ended up becoming obsessed with, and that was the natural series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I ended up loving this series. I didn't think I would. I had no idea if I was going to like it. I ended up reading The Naturals in a vlog and I think it was a library book and I got literally 50 pages in and I was like, you know what? I need the rest of this series. I love the criminal mind aspect of it. I loved the characters. I loved, weirdly enough, the romance. I hate love triangles. This one was actually done decently. And then if Iron Flame was on my lowest of least favorites, then Fourth Wing was in my favorites. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros definitely made it into my favorites for 2023. It is definitely addictive. I do find that the world building is more lacking in Fourth Wing. However, we are focused obviously on the main character going into the school for the first time, meeting all these characters, but I just enjoyed fourth wing a little bit more. Then the next favorite is one from one of my favorite authors. It's an author that I continuously auto buy for and he has a few other books coming out this year that I'm very excited for and that is In the Lives of Puppets by T.J. Klune. I have read everything that this author has published. I love their writing. I love the world building, the characters that they create, everything that they write is very unique. And then the next book is one that actually was a surprise to me. I had ended up getting it sent to me by the publisher and I read the synopsis and I was like, you know what, this really doesn't sound up my alley. I just don't think that I'm going to be very interested in it. And then I heard a lot of people talking about it and I was like, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. And that was Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Meyer. I picked it up and I was laughing the entire time. Is this book perfect? Absolutely not. It is just the funniest thing. It's great. I love the characters. They're truly funny. I would definitely, a lot of people classify this more as an office romance, and I would agree with that. So we have a main character who ends up saving a villain, and that villain hires her to be his assistant, and it's just her and her job as an assistant and what it's like to be an assistant to the villain. And there is a little, obviously it's a romance, and it's just cute, it's funny. Then another surprise read for me was Belladonna by Adeline Grace. This is a YA dark gothic fantasy, and it follows a young woman who can't die. And when she does kind of go into this in-between limbo world of life and death, she encounters death quite often, and she starts to find herself attracted to death. And it was something that was surprising to me because YA fantasy has been a very much so miss for me and not a hit for me and this was definitely one that hit all the right spots. And if you're looking for a cozy fantasy romance, something like Legends and Lattes, I highly recommend A Rival Most Vile by R.K. Ashwick. I loved this book so much. As I said, if you're looking for something that's similar to Legends and Lattes, however, has a little bit more fantasy subplot to it rather than just a focus on the romance and in one location. Highly recommend this one. This follows a potion master that has had this potion shop for quite some time and all of a sudden he ends up seeing that the shop across the street that's vacant is going to be also a potion shop and so he gets really upset and ends up getting having a rival with this human because the main character is an elf and these two, this is definitely a forks proximity a trope where the two are forced together to do 
a job for the mayor for the mayor's daughter's birthday. And then another big exciting read for me, one that is another TikTok hyped book in 2023 that I didn't think I was going to enjoy, but I picked up and absolutely loving it. And that was The Serpent in the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This is taking place in a vampire run world where a human was saved as a child by a vampire king and she is raised by him and she's raised to end up going into these trials, these vampire trials where he wants her to wish for her to become a full-fledged vampire. And so very interesting. I love the plot. I love the fantasy. I love the romance aspect of it. This is a romanticy, but I definitely felt like the author did a great job at balancing romance and fantasy and giving us a really great world building, complex character development. And so really enjoyed it. Then getting into the final two books that I absolutely loved in the year 2023. And the first one is actually one that I started and finished December 31st. I just devoured it and was obsessed with it. And that is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This was another one that I just had no desire to read or think about or anything like that because I'm just kind of diverting away from YA fantasy and young adult literature in general and have found love in other genres. However, after reading so many reviews and hearing so many things, I decided to pick it up and went to my library and it was there and I sat down and read it in I think six hours and my god it was amazing. I now see why everyone loves it so much and I cannot wait to get the sequel to this to read it here in 2024. And then the final book of 2023 that made it to the number one spot in my top 10 readings list and that was Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This was just an epic fantasy that from page one I was sucked in. This follows multiple different characters. You have the Queen of the West and she her just main duty in life is to conceive a child. Of course it follows a dragon rider in the east and these dragons are not like the West fears dragons and they see them as worms and they see them as creatures that need to be disposed of. However, they're powerful creatures. And of course, everyone is coming together to face off against the prophecy of this great dragon king coming back out of his slumber. Highly recommended if you're loving fantasy, if you love dragons, if you love, you know, political intrigue, if you love, you know, assassination attempts, this has it all and I recommend it. All right guys, so that was it for my 2023 best reads and worst reads. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know in the comments below if there are any books that you read in 2023 that you didn't enjoy or that you really enjoy and you highly recommend and you're like, definitely read this one in 2024. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.